So in this video, just like my previous one where I touched up a brand new saw, what I wanted to run through is how we actually sharpen the crosscut saw. This is the Spear and Jackson crosscut that already comes in a crosscut. And so without going too in depth into the terminology, which I have done in the past, this is going to be a down and dirty, practical, right on the spot, on the saw sharpening where I'll talk a little bit about the terms but we don't have to worry too much because we're actually going to be using the saw itself to reference our sharpening. So let's jump down here and I'll show you how I'm setting up this makeshift uh, vise here to hold the saw and then we'll get into it. So what I've got here is what we've seen lots of people talk about is just a piece of wood with a straight saw line cut down the middle still attached at this end and then to make it a little more practical than putting it down in your face vise which can be a bit of a pain I've lined it up here and I've clamped these two wooden screw uh, clamps down here into the vise I've kept them dead straight as I can so the wood can sit all level and we can keep our saw as level as possible now when doing this we want to have a triangular file this is the one that I use for most of my saws this one is a nine teeth print saw and this smaller file will actually still work you just want to make sure the height of the file is double the height of the tooth so we're not wearing out the middle of the file faster than we need to this particular one is the 187052 Barco saw file it's important to note when this is clamped in here that you want it clamped as close to the saw line as possible to try and prevent vibration. So if we come through and saw like this, you can hear there's no additional sort of vibration in the saw plate. If it was looser, it'd be having this high pitched sort of squeal to it, which we don't want. Now, when we get started on this, we have to note that this is a crosscut saw, as I mentioned, which means we have angles on our teeth here. In its most basic form, the teeth are essentially going to look like one of these knives and they're going to be dee dee like this alternating all the way along now if you look down at above there is some set on it if you want to know more about set i will leave the link down below to the comprehensive guide that i put together that released just last week on set so you can get a better idea of what set is now when we do this we can use something like a sharpie if you want to and mark the tops so we have a little black dot in this case because I'm using a black sharpie and what I'm trying to do is just get it on both sides I don't always find that the sharpie is necessary but if you're just beginning the sharpie is a little easier because then you can't really lose track of where you're at with your sharpening now note especially on a cross cut saw like this this is going to destroy the sharpie and other people have suggested different options like the the metal mark out fluid and things like that so let me just quickly finish this now I don't want to go too in depth to the terminology here but the two main ones are, uh, are the rake which is the angle on the front of the cut and tooth and fleam which is the angle that we run our saw across the saw plate now on a cross cut saw that fleam is somewhere between 60 and 65 degrees which is what these teeth happen to be here but we're actually going to use the teeth themselves and we can see it's not coming through dead flat it's actually got a slight angle to it because I'm actually just matching the angle of the tooth that is already there and so essentially when it comes to the rake this saw probably has about a, a 20 degree negative rake somewhere around that it's set back it's not deadbolt upright at that 90 degree mark which is zero rake it's kind of set back off that but not all the way back to a negative 30 degree rake which would mean our file sits flat across the top that's not what's happening here so now that I've just quickly talked about those um, I don't want to worry too much about that because we're going to use these saw teeth to determine our angle now what you want to be doing here is let the file do all the work you don't really want to press push down on the file you want the file to do what it's meant to do and it's only going to file because this is a single cut it's only going to file on the push stroke and so if you do pull it back try not to put much pressure on it and blunt in the teeth as you pull back because it, all the cutting is done on that forward pass the first tooth I sharpen is this one the bevel's facing your way 
and then I've skipped this side here. So in this gully here between them, that was skipped. And then this is the next spot we sharpen. So you sharpen a gully, miss a gully, sharpen a gully, miss a gully, sharpen a gully. And that's how you do this with the cross cut. So I'm already up to here and we're doing two passes. And so we're coming in. I've got the bevel on my side this time. I'm matching it. Feels like it's pushed nice and tight up against it. Two passes. On to the next one. Now, you might be able to lightly see here that I've used in the past is I've got these little lines here and they're at 65 and that's just as you're coming along here it's a little bit of a guide to have the correct angle although we're using the tooth here obviously uh, knowing that correct angle can be helpful at times now the other thing you'll notice is that I'm keeping this file as horizontal you don't want it angled down you don't want it angled up you want to keep it as horizontal as possible and that just means that in the gully of the tooth you're not um, cutting more down into it because that angle will cut more down into the gully, which I have heard some people say traditionally they might have done that to remove more material in green timber, but uh, for what we're using these for, it's irrelevant. Just keep the file horizontal. Now, when it comes to going the other way, you can just come straight in. If you've got it set up nice and high like this and you've got the clearance to come in like I do here, You'll just do the exact same process and just run it along that way. You can still walk along and sharpen from this side towards you. Or you can actually turn the saw around. I prefer with this sort of setup is just to do it like we have been. Now, the only disadvantage you have when you're running towards you is you do have to get over the top to ensure you're getting it or stand back here to ensure you're actually getting the sharpen in the direction you want it. And you can see right there, in fairly quick succession, we've got that completely sharpened. Now, don't get too held up on the angle when you're matching it to the tooth, because when it comes to that flame, somewhere between 60 to 65, I don't know that it's actually stayed all between 60 to 65. If it's a little bit outside those angles, I don't think it matters too much. Let's think about it. If we've got a marking knife like one of these diamond ones, do these angles here really matter about making this point sharp? No, it doesn't. It's only that this is flat and these angles meet it. Now, that additional angle might make it slice the fiber a little bit easier in some circumstances, but essentially it's only really the durability of that angle that matters in that. And so when it comes to a cross cut, it's only that the point is sharp that that's what really matters. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. So don't get too bogged down on your rake and your flame and all of that, because that's, in my opinion, is quite forgiving when it comes to a crosscut saw. It's a little less forgiving in a rip cut, especially if you want the rip cut to cut fast. But in this case with a crosscut, that's why I don't think you need to get too bogged down on it and you're just trying to match what's already there. And if your saw works, that's great. So let's just pull this out of our vise here and I'll get a piece of scrap down here and we'll see how well it saws. Because at the end of the day, if it's sawing nice, fast, quick, easy and uh, effortlessly, we have no real problems.
So we're going to do two tests here. The very first one is this laminated she oak board. She oak's quite a hard Australian timber, so I thought this would be perfect. Now we can see that started very well, very quick, very easy, and crosscut sawers always do because they have that negative rake into them, and so they usually don't bind up or get stuck like a rip cut would. <laughs> So that's as far as I'm going to go there. We uh, have a little bit of splintering and that's quite commonplace. Now I've just got a piece of pine in here and I thought we'd do the same thing here just so you can see that it performs equally well in both pine and uh, hardwood. <laughs> Once again, we have got this rough edge here as you usually get on the side away from you on a cross cut. This side is nice and clean. And so you can see, with very little effort, not really paying much attention to the rake, paying a little bit of attention to the angle to try and match what's already there, we've got a nice sharp saw. Now these do come relatively sharp, uh, straight from the store, however, um, uh, it's definitely different once you've given it a sharp and it does definitely work a lot uh, a lot better uh, when severing through in terms of getting clean edges on the side that you're cutting from and so to alleviate chipping and things like that well if you're cutting a board to length leave yourself a little bit of extra width then use a hand plane to clean it up because cross cuts are nearly always going to do that if you're cutting to say a gauge line well it's not going to splinter on that side that you want and where that gauge line is and so uh, you're not really going to have a problem worrying about that but in any case when you're doing cross cutting in this form with a panel saw it's usually uh, more of a rough cut and then you use a hand plane to clean it up and so there's no real uh, real problem with that chipping but it is something to be aware of. It's not something to do with how sharp it is or the angle of your tooth or anything like that. It's just the nature of older pine like this, very splintery hardwoods like a lot of the Aussie hardwoods and maybe it's not going to happen to you if you've got a, a different style of wood but with the ones that I deal with on a regular basis it is quite commonplace. So let me know down below if, if you have this issue when you cross cut about that splintering because as far as I know it's pretty commonplace in most timbers. So you have it folks, that's how you do a, a quick resharpening, not worrying too much about the angles and just going off what the saw already has and you can see that it works fairly well even if you don't match the angle 100% it's not going to affect the way the saw works and you can see that it's a fairly quick process and a little more forgiving in my opinion than uh, sharpening a rip saw. So if you like this video please do like and subscribe down below while you're down there, sound off in the comments, leave any of your issues with your cross cut or any other questions and something that I might not have covered when it came to the sharpening here. I'd very much appreciate you to leave any questions because I'd love to help you out. And if you'd like to see another great video such as the one you've seen here today on the Spear and Jackson saw, do check the video out here where I do the comprehensive guide on saw set, which is another factor that can affect how well your saw operates. Bye for now.